today's consumer is facing one of the toughest economic environments of all time, and the restaurant industry has been suffering. But someone might want to tell that to Dunkin' Brands. We're here with Dunkin' CEO Nigel Travis, who has been firing on all cylinders to push Dunkin' and Baskin Robbins to new heights. Nigel, here at the ICR Exchange, we've heard from so many restaurant chains talking about building their beverage program, building coffee. It's the hottest growth segment right now. Obviously, Dunkin' is a coffee brand, but what you've been focusing on are your food items, whether it's turkey sausage or French toast bagels. Talk to us a little bit about your menu strategy at Dunkin' Donuts. There is a misnomer out there that the only items we have that are high margin are beverages. That's not true. We also have breakfast sandwiches that are nearly as high in margin terms. But in the last 12 months or so, we've seen a real opportunity in the afternoon segment. Snacking. You know, it's not lunch, it's not dinner, it's snacking. And we're focused on that. And we've had some great bakery sandwiches. We've got a menu pipeline that the franchisees describe as awesome. How have you seen consumers embrace some of these new menu items at Dunkin'? The consumer loves choice. We give them our DD Smart on the Dunkin' side and on the Baskin side, our BR Right Choices. The latest product that's come out, which is a bit like DD Smart, just slightly over, but is under 400 calories, which is the turkey sausage sandwich, has, I think, surprised us. And I think why it's so good, it's a great sandwich with the halo of being relatively good for you. So this may be the trend of the future. There's something that really looks and feels good and is, is a hearty sandwich without being over the top, maybe the trend for the future. To be successful in today's restaurant industry, you need to take market share and particularly at breakfast. It's one of the most competitive uh, day parts and it's so habitual for a customer. What has Dunkin' Donuts done to make sure that you're still driving that early morning day part? Uh, we've, I think, been very aggressive against competition when, they ca when they've come in. But what's pleasing to me is we've had people like McDonald's come in with their McCafes, and, and we've managed to still keep growing during that. So market share to us in that category is very important. And I think it's a mixture of great beverages, particularly our coffee. Um, breakfast sandwiches have been awesome. I think we've done very well in the last few months with our trade up. We're getting our franchisees to think in a more sophisticated way about how they can take that extra 99 cents per transaction. Um, obviously, we could have a three piece combo, which we haven't traditionally had. Um, so I think that's an opportunity. Talk to us as much as you can about growth projections. What are you looking for in the U.S.? We know you just made a big announcement about a move into Southern California, but also talk to us about the international markets, especially when it comes to Baskin Robbins, which is more of Dunkin' Brands' international growth vehicle. This is a growth company. And when I look at our segments, we talk about Dunkin' Donuts U.S., growth in terms of comps and profitability, growing uh, contiguously across the country. And here I am announcing today that we're going into Southern California. International, we're very enthusiastic about Baskin. Uh, Baskin, I think, is a brand that is well respected globally. And then if you like the icing on the cake, sorry about the pun, <laughs> is that Baskin Robbins that's been declining for a number of years is getting to the stage where in the next probably 12 to 24 months, we're gonna see that becoming a slow growth business. What does Dunkin' consider its value strategy in terms of pricing and in terms of what you give the consumer for the money they're spending? So, so we've managed to keep our coffee prices basically static. Our franchisees, as I said before, I think have done a great job. You know, we may have brainwashed them, but, but they're doing a great job. Um, we've actually become a little bit more aggressive ourselves at different day parts and different markets, and we're seeing the results of that. We're using all the technology at our disposal, like our mobile app, that I think is second to none. So, so we feel we can be very competitive. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, we know people love our coffee, they love our speed, and most of all, they love the combination of our coffee and breakfast sandwiches together. Nigel, thank you so much for joining Nation's Restaurant News at the ICR Exchange. Crunch Time has been great to work with. I've seen a lot of food cost systems out there and I really believe Crunch Time is the best program out there. 
Using Crunch Time has helped the cafes be able to fine tune their food costs. They've been able to move their variance to theoretical a couple percentage points in a very short period of time. Our managers follow the task list. They're able to see what is due that day if they have to place an order to reconcile orders. Area directors are able to follow up on our cafe managers. Invoicing is much faster and easier for them and taking inventories is night and day to what they were doing before. Crunch time has definitely changed the way we do things around here in the sense of we're more disciplined. We have the cafe managers more disciplined where they look at their inventories, they look at their variances on a weekly basis, and they're accountable for the results. Our cafe managers love the program. It's easy to use, it's intuitive for them, so it makes them much more efficient. They spend less time in the back office on the computer. They're able to spend more time on the floor with our guests doing what they need to do.